All right. Let's see. Can I still reach? Yes. So I can still reach the weed behind the video. I'm currently using my grinder to hold this little guy up. So. I should note that it's going to be an eventual goal to cut these down by a significant margin because obviously chugging these back like a chimney is not good for one's health. Not one bit. Well, taking a moment to try to hide my cigarette from some passing children because it's not polite to smoke around children. And I feel embarrassed. I'm the kind of person who doesn't matter where my quote-unquote audience is. I just get hyper-anxious about it. But right now, I'm going to pretend that only I exist. And I'm just alone in this park. So let's start off by saying that this... Video diary log is supposed to be the start of an upward trend in productivity and mental health like you know the typical i'm going to overhaul my life i'm not trying to adopt a specific program or even espouse a certain pattern of beliefs or behaviors i'm well i'm actually trying to treat this as a very unique self-focused experiment in the sense of I hope to come up with my own method of customizing myself most effectively because I don't think any human brain is made alike and I don't think the pattern of things we do with those brains is ever made equal either so basically the goal is to come up with an appropriate way for me to follow. Like, everybody's got to have their own way. Like, I know that there's definitely some pretty intense philosophical, mystical concepts that say a lot more about the way, so to speak. So if you actually want some really legitimate wisdom, I just say, look up the way probably come across plenty across a whole bunch of different cultures but for instance right now I am smoking a cigarette I have not made the decision to quit today I'm not starting my diary of self recombination with some immediate act of courage or sacrifice even though that is going to be needed in the long run in fact you might see me chain smoking over the course of this video because i'm in thought i'm laying out the groundwork for a lot of future activity and recently i've enjoyed smoking while doing things like that And I guess the way I would justify that in the context of step-by-step -step building. Right now, I gain more overall pleasure and overall utility from sitting here enjoying myself smoking a cigarette, thinking about the future. Thinking about what I want to build, how I want to build it, where I want to build it. What daily have-tos are going to become a staple of the thing that I build. And then letting my own behavior phase out the habit. Like, I love dancing. I love exercise. I love running. I've been a bit off my game lately. But when I have been in the most dedicated rhythms, there were times when I was exercising quite a bit when I was smoking and times when I was exercising quite a bit and my lungs were perfectly clean. 
The common element tended to be that after adopting good core habits, the vices tended to be moderated by those good core habits. And if you have vices and you're trying to attack them first, a lot of the time you just create a lot of guilt for yourself. But if you're like, I'm going to probably try to smoke less because I'm going to be going for runs every day and doing periodic yoga or like, I want to go to a boxing gym. You technically would get the most overall efficiency by just dropping your habit and going to the boxing gym. And I'd say of all the possible things you could use as a uh, replacement for smoking, boxing is probably one of the best <laughs> because cravings, right? And this is kind of you seeing me plan another bit of my future. Right now, I'm not in a place to be able to afford that. I am in a place to be able to afford taking up daily training. And the more I do my own pattern of training, even if it's outside of a controlled environment, the more likely I am to spend less time doing this. <laughs> And I'm likely to get there without having to worry about being a bad person or setting in a specific routine. It's more like letting ease be a guide. This isn't to say that I haven't and don't recognize the power of just making a committed decision and then sticking to it. I remember when I first quit smoking for a year, I set a date. I bought my last pack, I smoked my pack thoroughly, and I thought about all the cigarettes that I was smoking, including the fact that they all felt kind of pointless, and that's why you end up chain smoking. And I stuck to it. It was pretty good for my lungs. It wasn't necessarily as good for my brain because, and I'm going to be talking liberally over the course of my videos about both psychology and spirit because those two things both play in. The problem I have with smoking has a lot to do with a combination of trauma and history. I've grown up in some tricky places and I believe that there's enough out there and reaching back from my childhood because I spent time overseas and when you grow up when you're born in a place where things like I don't know fucking spirits haunting your local grave like nobody haunts graveyards depends I don't know but like when you grow up with spirits being a reality and people just sort of all collectively accept it that's the way that any sort of weird stuff works in the world in, in Canada it isn't as viable because you don't have as, as many groups of people who are aware and the more people are aware of any given concept, the more power it has, right? But tobacco is both psychologically an antipsychotic and spiritually a protective herb. It's a peacemaker. Obviously, what's been done to tobacco isn't peaceful. Tobacco has been kind of absolutely destroyed and removed from its original context. But that being said, Whenever I choose to quit tobacco, there's usually a period of almost hyper-realized spiritual both awareness and malaise. It's like everything gets way too vivid and it's hard to avoid a lot of what the city is saying or animals and plants in the city or people or thought forms made of various groups of people or like and you don't want to just be listening to the droning sound of what is effectively a jungle on steroids like that's kind of the spiritual profile of the city in some ways it's just too loud but now i'm just sort of talking What are some basic goals? <laughs> some basic goals. 
<coughs> For one, today, I need to keep my five minute daily meditation as a permanent habit for the rest of my life. It used to be that I would always do what I needed to do in that regard. Very recently, actually, and it's just been depression that stopped me from being on my game there, but just five minutes. Just five minutes. Every single day. And that's one. Two is art. Art is probably the best way to channel, understand, and interface with a lot of what I see and feel. And it's actually probably one of the best ways to, like a lot of people talk about trying to contact entities or spirits. If you want to, if you want to actually understand something that's affecting you, regardless of your level of talent. We, every human being is born with the ability to sense something. So if you draw, it doesn't really matter who you are or what your background, if you decide to draw what you're feeling without trying to draw a specific thing, you'll get a good sense of what's poking at you. And that's a part of how I need to uh, keep an inventory of myself. Because I need to draw. I also need to dance because dancing, especially to a strong drum beat, seems to keep me awake. I need to run. The running... Let's see. Let's keep it simple, actually. Because I know that I'm going to want to have at least one additional practice. And one of the things about starting new habits and routines is that unless the set of routines that you are trying to adopt are mutually supportive, like things that naturally chain into each other and lift each other up, you'll just overwhelm yourself. So, so far we've got a very simple five minute meditation. We've got dancing, we've got drawing. And oh, um, the obvious fourth, because there's gonna be five, yoga. Yoga is definitely something that my body needs. It's gonna be one of the best ways to restore my voice in particular and as for the fifth I need to write out my intent like two things that are just generally wise to do is to write out what it is that you want as you have it which is to say write as if you already have it and then live as if you have it in that moment or say it to yourself in the mirror, or like do a little dance, I don't know. Like, and that's the whole reason why people like their rituals, is if you attach significance to the things that you wish to achieve in the world, the more deeply embedded the significance, the more likely the thing is to occur. And that's why dancing is actually probably one of the best ways if you want to commit an act to a specific intent is just say what you want as if you have it and then dance it in the way that feels most natural to your body or to the music you like most it doesn't really matter and then forget about it until it's your time to dance again next so I think I just came up with one way to uh, specifically focus my intent. So I'm going to write down my will or my desire or my interest and then dance.
this qualifies as progress. 15 minutes, reasonable.